Jarmanda with Street Smile Solutions, <clears throat> streetsmilesolutions.com. And some of you may have heard about Invisalign's new personal plan. I'm super psyched about this because this is going to save us so much time in entering a case. You can work up your preferences ahead of time. Um, this was just launched literally yesterday. So at um, the AAO in Chicago, they did a quick overview and then they launched it and GPs and orthos can sign up for it. Um, I got a prompt to sign up for it because I attended the course and now I'm signing our, our offices up, but I don't know if you guys got your prompt. So you might want to ask your territory manager or call to see how to, how to get the prompt so that you can set it up. But anyways, I'm not able to show you the personal life plan, special instructions workflow because it's literally like 80 something pages. It took me an over an hour to do this. And I, and I know what I'm doing. So um, I know that GPs, once they start doing this, are going to be like, huh? So um, I'm going to verbally take you through it because since I can't show it to you, it would be a violation of all Invisalign's policies. And I have to be a lot more careful now what I show and what I talk about. So as always, I have to give this disclaimer now. Um, I'm doing my best to give you guys information that so that you can have better clin checks. That's my ultimate goal. I'm not disparaging or showing any personal information of Align Technology or Invisalign. They did not ask me to do this. I chose to do this because you guys will definitely need this help. Um, if Align Technology thinks I said anything in error, they are welcome to contact me and I'll be glad to modify this recording or take it down. Please do not have your lawyers chase me. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna say, yeah, I wanna do it. It's gonna ask you if you're a GP or an ortho. I'm not sure what the difference is. Um, I'm going through a GP one right now. Um, you're gonna put your name in, your CLIN ID, and your email address. Then they're gonna ask you on point number two, um, they're gonna ask you if your CLIN ID is used, if more than one doctor uses your account to do Invisalign cases, like if you have associates doing it. I don't know how this makes it different, but that is not how we do it in our office. So I said it's only one doctor, okay. So if, if you're more than one doctor, you might wanna ask your TM what that means before you select that. I'm not sure. Okay, point three, it says, um, this is confusing. They said, verify your information and special instructions. After reviewing your special instructions on your Invisalign doctor site, do you need to make any changes to your clinical preferences or special instructions? So I'm assuming what that means is if you go into your, and they did not explain it. Um, if you go into your regular portal and you click on clinical preferences, do you want to change anything that's in there? So I said no, because ours is correct. But if you've never been into your clinical preferences, you really should start there first. Um, because it might change all the rest of this that I'm telling you. So we said no. Okay, then what's gonna happen is they said there's eight sections. The purpose of collecting this information today is to streamline and optimize your um, case submission experiences and to make the process quicker. Um, we understand that your treatment goals vary by patient. That's a good point. So, but we want to get the maximum value out of your inputs today. So think about what you would do typically for the majority of your patients in a certain scenario. And just some feedback to Align Technology since they do listen to my stuff. This would have been a million times easier if y'all had like sample cases, like when you did class three teen, class three adult, class two teen, class two adult, um, because as much as I'm pretty good at visualizing what you're talking about, I know, <laughs> There's not going to be a single GP that gets this. Um, and even some orthos are going to be stumped. So it just, they, when they see it, they might get it, but they're not going to be able to translate the words into, I don't know. I, this was, I don't, sorry, Align Technology. I, I, I totally respect what you guys are doing here, but the implementation was not good. So, um, so that's why I'm making this video, try to help you guys out. I'm going to try to translate this into real English, and then you guys are just going to have to visualize it. Um, but I think a lot of this is going to change as I do this on our offices, then I'll be able to see what the cases come back like, and then I might change things. Okay, um, point number four, that says four and five. Um, okay, so the first question is about single arch treatment. Well, I really don't believe in single arch treatment, so <laughs> I'd like to add, say that's not happening, but they said if you do a single arch case, and as you guys know, I'm super anti single arch cases, unless it's a few special isolated situations like somebody has a full upper arch of implants or an RPD or a, a denture, you know, um, or major perio on the top and just can't treat it. You know, there's got to be some reason why we're not doing the, the other the opposing arch, not just because the patient wants it. 
I mean, otherwise it has to be like a crazy simple case, like less than five aligners, anterior teeth only. But anyways, so my answer was I want a diagnostic arch on the opposing arch, not passive aligners, not nothing. And I'm pretty sure if you do passive aligners in the opposite arch, they're going to charge you more than nothing. But so right now I said diagnostic arch for that one. Okay. Um, point six or six, five. Um, do you want to correct midline discrepancies in your patients? Um, if they have midline issues. So, I mean, it really depends. I actually don't always want to do it on the first ClinCheck. So I said, yeah, um, it's probably a no. I mean, ultimately I do, but it really just depends on the situation. And it's hard to tell unless you've opted into using the right parameters and um, technology so that you can see the in face. So, um, so you can see the upper midline, you know what I mean, with the clean check. But so I said, yeah, but it's kind of a yeah, no. Um, I said I want to correct the midline to the face as opposed to each other. Definitely midline to the face. Um, so I liked But then they said that's under development. It's not working. OK. Do you want to improve your midline using IPR? That's normally not the default I want. Normally, I'd rather use sequential distalization or just align to the midline. So I said no. But sometimes, yeah. So that's what I said there. Um, OK, now we're going to do adults and teens. And they're going to break it out. Adults is all permanent dentition. Teens is anyone with uh, mixed dentition, erupting permanent, or permanent who are teenaged. So I guess anything over age 18 would be an adult. I wish they would redo this align technology to growing teens or pubertal teens, and then everyone else is an adult. because. An adult to me is a girl who's done growing who's 16. So I didn't like the way they did this. This is very confusing. Um, so they're going to ask you questions about how you like to do deep bite adult cases. For everything, I always said I want to see my options for personalization. So um, and then again, I don't I don't love the way they describe the deep bite because they're talking about deep bites being two millimeters or more overbite, which I mean, I get, but a lot of that is going to depend on the size and the shape of the teeth. I like percentages better than two, than millimeters, but whatever. So confusing. Um, and then they ask, what do you classify as a deep bite in adult in, in millimeters? I'm like, uh, it really depends on the smile, the face, the, um, the skeletal, the staff, the, sh you know, the, the shape of the teeth. The height of the teeth, the size of the teeth. So, but they're making you say how many millimeters and they give you a whole range. So I just did 3.5. I don't know. I picked a I picked an arbitrary number. And they said at the end for an adult, how how do you want the final overbite to be? So I mean normal is gonna be like maybe one to two and a half millimeters, one to three. Again, depends on if they have short clinical crowns, it's gonna be one. If they have long clinical crowns, it's gonna be three to four. So again, this is just weird. Um so I said one millimeter final overbite because, I mean, I do tend to like to overcorrect a tiny bit, but I don't overcorrect to an open bite. But they do give you that option. Um, they also said, do you want to do a combination of absolute intrusion and relative extrusion? If you do that, you're going to have heavy contacts, which is BS because they can totally balance the contacts. But that's what I said. Most deep bite patients, whether it's an adult or a teen, we're going to do a combination of absolute intrusion and relative extrusion. Sometimes I'm going to look at the SEF and look at the smile line. I'm going to say, no, it's all going to be relative extrusion. So you're going to have to tweak that. Sometimes we're going to look at a case and say, you know what? I'm looking at the mandibular plane angle. This is going to be all absolute intrusion. So. Again, this has to be customized, but they don't give you the option to customize it fully. Um, do you want to use bite ramps? I said, yeah, but they're telling you that sometimes bite ramps are automatically triggered only in certain situations. I said, put them on all deep bite cases. Um, they also asking you, do you want it on the centrals, laterals, or canines? Well, again, that's going to depend on how much overjet. So I just marked them all for now, but we'll see. Um, now they're going to take you to attachment placement. I said um, use align defaults for attachments because in general, I use align defaults for attachments for now. Sometimes I swap them out once I see it. Then they're asking you to give additional instructions for deep bite correction. So this was my scripting. If there's overjet, start with your start with your attachments on upper threes. Um, if no overjet, two to two. If overjet, move the attachments from upper threes to two to two as deep bite improves, remove the turbos three aligners before the end. And I basically said on most patients, 
we're going to do a combination of absolute intrusion and relative extrusion, but we might modify that on a case by case basis. All right, now they're going to ask same thing for teens and pretty much I'm just keeping it the same just to th keep things easy. Um, and then there, if you do that, it skips to open bite. Um, again, any open bite is usually caused by a habit or a skeletal issue and it's very unpredictable. So you want to treat that first before you even do open bite. But let's say we treated the habit, a little open bite exists. This is really case specific. You have to look at the smile line. You have to look at the staff. You don't know if you're going to do a combination of relative, um, absolute, uh, absolute extrusion of molars, um, or relative extrusion of molars, intrusion, sorry, relative intrusion of molars and absolute extrusion of incisors. That's the opposite of the deep bite. And sometimes you're only going to extrude incisors. Sometimes you're only going to intrude molars, depending on the smile line. Sometimes you're going to do a combination of both. I just said, use a combination of both for everything. And then they said, what do you classify as an anterior open bite in millimeters? I said zero, but, um, and then how do you want it corrected at the end? I did a little overcorrection to 1.5, kind of the opposite of the deep bite thing. Okay. What else? Yeah. So same thing for adults. Do you want to keep the attachments the same? I said, yeah. Um, basically I, in the comments section, they asked you to summarize it. And I said, it's going to depend on how gummy the smile it is, what the Ceph numbers are also habits. I mean, whatever. Um, I'm going to treat the teens the same way. Um, okay. Now we're going to do posterior cross bite correction for adults. This is great. I'm so glad they're breaking this out into adult and teens and teens. I'm going to correct it. But again, it goes back to the whole growing teen, how we define a teen. So they're going to lump everybody 18 and under or anyone in mixed dentition into teens. And they're going to do those parameters, whereas I'd like it to be different, but you don't get that option. So I'll have to go in and manually change things. So in adults, I told them don't fix the crossbite on the molars unless it's a dental crossbite and not a skeletal crossbite, but do fix it on the premolars. Sometimes I don't, so, but that's how I left it. For teens, I'm gonna fix crossbites. That's what I said, no defaults. Fix crossbites in teens. I mean, ultimately you should be doing expanders on the teens first, but the line technology has not released their expanders yet. Okay, I'm only on question 31, you guys. There's so many more questions. This is a lot of work. Um, and then the weird thing is once you fill this out, it says you still have to schedule an interview with a team member. So that's very strange. Um, then they ask how much expansion in quadrants in, in, sorry, how much expansion in millimeters per quadrant do you want to perform on adult patients? Uh, I don't know. I mean, minimal. It really depends on their perio. Sometimes none, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. So they give a huge range. So I just arbitrarily pick two, but sometimes I say no expansion. Do you want IPR in your initial ClinCheck setup? Sure, on adults, I'm fine with this. Oh, now we're on crowding of adults. And um, they're gonna ask what's the maximum amount of crowding that you want um, on anterior teeth, posterior teeth. I just said 0.5 on them all. Some people don't like any IPR on posterior. Some people don't like any IPR on anterior. So this is where, this is your personal preferences. Uh, oh, I like number 39. They asked if you can, if we can round trip. I said, nope, no round trip. So that's, that's a big thing for me. Um, you can customize your IPR staging. You can say when you want it, appointment one, appointment five, um, broken up into multiple appointments, all one appointment. So this is where you can customize that. I can't tell you what to do with that. That's going to depend on your processes. Um, now they're going to talk you know, more about adults. I'm going to keep see in kids i definitely said less ipr more expansion i said no limit for expansion but i don't know if I'm, i might change that and i don't want ipr um and i definitely said no round tripping now they're going to move 0.41 to class two cases this got a little confusing i mean a lot of this in adults is going to depend on the e-line the smile line the ceph um, the profile, the airway, the sleep. I mean, there's so many variables. There's just no way I can say do it all the, this for adults. So I just say correct adults through sequential distalization, but a lot of times we're not going to do that. But they don't really break it out like that. Let's see. I'm going to have them prior prioritize molar relationships. Um, and then they break out um, as opposed to canine. If you do canine, they're only moving front teeth. They're not moving back teeth. So I think I want to always go for ideal first. We can always change that right they give you an option of like elastics or distalization i just said distalization 
Okay, so they have all different types of sequential distillation, which I didn't even know existed. So the one I always do, you guys, is just regular sequential distillation, one tooth at a time. Yes, it takes a little bit longer, but it's really, really predictable and it works. They have a couple other ones where it's improve sequential distillation where they're so basically they're saying these other ones um where they're going to move three teeth at one time i don't know about that so i'm going to stick with what i know works and it's predictable and if i start to see that this improved or this compact sequential distillation works then maybe i'll do it but i have i don't know and then there's something called aesthetic start where they're going to align the front teeth first and then while they're doing distillation or we do that first but that's not a good idea because you're going to have round tripping so i just decide to keep it all at like full regular old-fashioned sequential distillation they're going to ask what's the most sequential distillation you want to do i mean i've done seven or eight millimeters a lot of that's going to depend on the x-ray so i said that um do you want buttons or slots i said all buttons for elastics although we don't always put elastics on our sd cases only if it's really severe then they're going to go to teens I mean, I don't really do class two elastics. Sorry, I don't really do sequential distillation in teens. I mean, we're gonna try MA first and they don't really talk about that. But um, so I kind of said I'll do more like elastics for teens. Let's see. And they're asking if they wanna visualize the bite correction at the beginning, the middle or the end of treatment. It's always been at the end. So I've never seen what it looks like at the beginning. So I marked end, but maybe I'll change my mind on that. Again, buttons or slots. I said buttons on all. Um, I said I wanted MA first and then sequential distillation as needed. Okay, now class three cases for adults. It says, do you even take them? If you don't take them, they're not going to go through all this. And we said, yeah, we take them. Um, would prefer sequential distillation if possible. Okay, molars for 0.54 and your points might be different. It's either elastics or, or it's SD. And same thing, it's going to be sequential, improved, or compact. I just kept with sequential. What's the most distillation that you want in adults? I said three millimeters. I don't know. I might do change it to two later, but that's what I said for now. Buttons or slots, said buttons. Um, class three for teens. Again, class three on teens, you really should be doing protraction face mask and expander, but they don't give you that option. That would be so cool if, they, if we could eventually hook that up. Same thing, sequential, improved, or compact. I said sequential. Okay. On teens, I didn't do that much SD because usually they have impacted third molars and you can't get much. So I said 1.5. I don't know. Might change that. Buttons, no slots. Um, okay. Now they're going to go to premolar extraction cases. I've definitely done them, so but I usually just use their defaults. So I just said, yeah. Um but we'll just use their defaults. Okay, we're at point, it's weird. We're at point 66, but also says point 80. And we're gonna use defaults for premolar extractions. Although in teens, I hopefully we're not doing premolar extractions. Then they're gonna go to lower incisor extraction. Yeah, we do that. No round tripping, please. Use align defaults. Um, I don't really get that much into attachments on those. And same thing on teens. I don't really do lower incisor extractions on teens, but all right. And then that's it. It is now submitted. So um, that has been submitted for us. Um, I think the next step is that we have to schedule a meeting with somebody on their team. I don't know why, because we just gave all this information. But um, yeah, that's my feedback. It's kind of a clunky process. You're going to get confused. Definitely have an orthodontist help you walk you through it. I hope that Invisalign changes their process if they get anything out of this and they actually have visuals because I think if I saw what three millimeters look like or, you know, two millimeters expansion per quad look like, I think I could be like, no, I don't want that. Yes, I like this plan, you know, but I'm sure that would be a lot more complicated. All right. Thanks.